Hey everyone, welcome back to the Breath of the Wild series. Today we're going to make the room that eats physics-based objects into space. Apologies in advance if this one won't include the visuals like the Magnesis video did, but since quite a lot of those visuals are similar, you could probably pull uh, most of it from that last video. So first let's put a sphere in the world and simulate its physics. Then we got to use a line trace to freeze a physics object. So open the third person character and off left mouse button click create a line trace from the camera. I made mine reach 3000 for testing purposes, but you'll probably want something smaller for balance. Add a branch to check if we hit something and if so, we want to check if it's simulating physics, so break the hit and off the hit component check if it's simulating physics. Collapse all this code into a function because we have to reuse it later and add an output for hit component and is simulating physics and we'll call that one stasis available. Outside the function, check if stasis is available and promote the hit component to a variable called stasis component. If we hit it, we want to freeze it, so we're just going to turn physics off with a set simulate physics node. Now we need an actor that stores the information for how much force to add to the object when stasis breaks. Create an actor called stasis force and add an arrow to it. Uncheck hidden in game because this arrow we're going to use as a visual reference to the direction that the object will be sent. We'll come back to the code later. Back in the third person character, after the left mouse button is pressed, but before the line trace, we're going to ask if the stasis component is valid. Because if it already exists, we just want to add force into the object, and if not, we want to create a new frozen object. Off is valid, run the trace for stasis function again. We're using a line trace because we don't have any combat in this project, but most third person combat mechanics work with traces as well. Then we want to check if the hit component is equal to our stasis component, so we have to hit our frozen object and add kinetic energy to it. Off the true, we'll create a new function called add force to stasis component. In it, we want to spawn the actor stasis force in the center of our stasis component by using its world location. Promote the stasis force actor to a variable and ask if it's valid before the spawn, since we only want to add a single stasis force actor. Continuing from the end, we want to set the stasis force actor's arrow rotation to the angle that we're hitting the object. So get the follow camera forward vector and convert it to a rotator with a make rot from x node. Also connect the stasis force actor's is valid node to the world location, because if it is valid, we only want to update the rotation and the direction. Now let's go back into the stasis force actor and add our code. Create a function called update force info and an integer called hits. In the function, add one to hits, but clamp it to a max of five. This way, the amount of force that can be added to the object is clamped as well, but you can continue to update the direction as long as stasis hasn't broken yet. This, of course, is optional, but if you keep exponentially multiplying the force you're adding, you could end up with broken results like the illusion of an object just disappearing, when what really happened is it just flew out of the world in less than a frame. We want the arrow to get longer for every hit to act as a visual for the amount of force we're adding, so let's get the arrow and set the relative scale through. D. There is an arrow length property, but it doesn't seem to work in blueprints, at least not in 4.26.2. Set the Y and the Z scale to 1, but for X, get the hits plus 1. We also want the arrow to interpolate from yellow to red, so set the arrow's color to alert from yellow to red. For the alpha, we need to convert the 1 through 5 hits to a value of 0 to 1. So use the map range clamped with the arrow's X scale as the value, and then the in ranges being the 1 to 5, and the out being 0 to 1. This will do all that boring gross math for us. And lastly, create a float called impulse and set it to hits multiplied by 2500. You can change this number as well. I think an impulse ranging from 2500 to 12,500 pretty closely replicates the amounts from Breath of the Wild. Back in the third person character, add the update force info function to the end of the add force to stasis function. Now we actually need stasis to break after a few seconds, so after we simulate physics in the false in the event graph, set a timer by function name with the name being break stasis and, a t and the time being 5 seconds. Make a function with the exact same name and set the stasis component physics back to true. After we do that, we need to add an impulse in the correct direction, but before we do, we need to check if the stasis force actor is even valid because if we never hit the object, it would have never been created. If it is, add an impulse to the stasis component. The impulse will come from our stasis force actor's arrow rotation converted to a vector with the get rotation x vector node, then multiplied by our stasis force actor impulse variable for the amount. Also make sure to check velocity change so the mass doesn't affect the impulse. After that, destroy the stasis force actor and set the stasis component variable to null. If the stasis force variable was never valid, set the stasis component variable to null as well. And there you have it. Click on any component with physics enabled and it will freeze the physics. Hit it as many times as you want in the next 5 seconds to build up kinetic energy and the arrow will indicate the force and direction. After the 5 seconds, the object will fly. If you found this tutorial useful, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel tons. We also have a Discord in the description if you have any questions. See you next time.